Hey, Jeff from Devious here, and I am super excited because we get to work on my Kodiak today. And guess what we're doing? My friend Jamie here from Five Field Fabrication is going to put an iPad in my dash. Yes, sir. So we, what we do is we take these kits that we actually manufacture, iPad drops in, locks into the dash, take it right out, take it in the house with you. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify his dash that's already been hacked up a little bit, but we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna fix it a little bit better. And uh, that way we can take advantage of navigation, music, Netflix, whatever you wanna do. And uh, it's gonna be rocking. So looking Pretty forward excited. to it. Pretty yeah. excited, let's get it doing. Yes. So this is what we have to work with. Uh, I bought the truck this way and somebody uh, decided a 19 inch TV would be a really good idea <laughs> in, the, in the dash, which it is kind of cool like Hater Vision, but That's right. it blinds you at night. Like it yeah. blinds you. So um, I'm not really that kind of mini trucker. So <laughs> um, and I'm sure it doesn't really do much for you other than just being a monitor. You don't really have any navigation. Yeah. I like your overdrive switch there. Overdrive that's, switch is over here. That's we got, extremely we got effective. Under here and it just doesn't, doesn't really fit. I like so. the executed mount on the, um, yeah. on the singleton radio down here. That's fantastic. So my plan is to wrap all this in leather because they did all suede and it's, I don't know, to me it's just too much. Okay. So, you know, yeah. suede underwear is fine, but suede dash is not so good. <laughs> right, right. So I'm going to do it all in leather. Uh, I'll probably keep the suede headliner, but uh, and then I, th I think that this this is going to make the perfect addition to what I'm trying to do. Yeah, I think if we put it on this side, because we were talking about potentially adding the AC vent back up there too, correct? Yeah, yeah I definitely need AC right here. Um, maybe the spot for a switch or two. Right. Um, even if it isn't this switch, I mean, this is pretty simple wiring, so right. um, we can add something and if they didn't start that card, they're a lot happier right now. Absolutely. <laughs> That's awesome. There's some high-end stuff going on in here. Dash is fucked up anyway, so I'm just gonna put cracks and cracks. Look at that shit. Super nice. And there you go. They literally just cut the plastic frame that came with the TV. They cut it in and then just snap the screen back into it afterwards. Needed to cut all the suede away from this dash bezel that someone put all over it in order to determine what we're working with with this bezel to see if what we gotta cut, what we gotta alter, what we gotta add. Once we get it all off, then we realize that they buried this thing in Bondo so bad that we have to cut all that stuff away in order to make this kit fit into place. As you can see, there's just a lot of it and the, the bezel is broken in multiple places. You can't bond plastic to Bondo, so that stuff has to go. Once that's away, we can see that the kit will fit into place like so. And what we needed to do also is they cut away the uh, factory AC vent just to the right of the gauge cluster. So we borrowed a, uh, a donor bezel, or we got a donor bezel from a, a Chevy Astro van, and we used that to get the bezel piece that housed the vent so we could put it back into the bezel. Being that the contours are not exactly the same as the one on the Kodiak, we have to actually, you know, cut this piece to uh, to get the contours to fit and look as if it was OEM again. We want to make sure that the edges are nice and smooth, so we have to get everything smoothed out, get all the burrs off, so that way when we go to plastic weld this together and bond the two pieces together, that they'll go together nicely and have a, a nice seam. We want to trace that edge into the bezel so we can cut it in and then we'll cut all that bondo out. Once we clean up the edges on the actual main bezel and we get we test fit the panel, make sure it lines up the way we want, which it does. It lines it nice and smooth. Then we gotta get uh, all that bondo off and then we can bond the two together. As you can see it was a little thick. <laughs> It took a little bit of finesse to get that out of there. Now you can see the piece lines up nice. And we're just gonna tack it into place using our, our hot iron. We use the iron to 
melt the two pieces to each other and then once they are actually set then we can weld them together. I use a lot of like, zip ties or thinner plastic because it melts faster than the plastic around it and it, it forms down into the crevice between the two panels. And then what I'll do is I'll use a, a gel form ABS adhesive to go into the crack and then heat it up along with the plastic and then it will infuse between the two panels and strengthen the panels. We weld these two together uh, to create strength in the panel prior to doing any kind of glass work. A lot of guys will just glass it or glue it only and then glass over the glue, but the problem is, is it's still going to want to separate and pull apart over time, so this gives it more strength. It may not be the prettiest, but it is the most successful process that I've found in doing it. Now once that's in place, we got to get rid of this bondo on the top part of the dash so we can get back to the original shape of the dash that it was intended to have. As you can see, it's a little loose and floppy without the pieces attached to each other, so we need to get them to attach back to each other and give the bezel strength prior to putting the kit in and give the kit something to adhere to. Needed to add a few other pieces of plastic in there so we, you know, that wasn't available with the donor, so we just heated up some plastic with the torch and uh, kind of shape it by hand and just melt them into place. I couldn't even tell you how many little pieces of plastic we had to cut to fill in this bezel to make it whole again. We needed it in order to get this bezel back. Now that that's in place, you can, uh, you can see that the kit itself creates a gap between the bezel and the kit. So what I'm trying to find out is we're going to have to actually cut this edge off and I need to blend it back in and create filler panels to fill in this opening. So now I'm just going to actually cut the edge of this of the kit off and uh, follow the line that we need. Just using the router table we're going to trim this edge off nice and clean as opposed to using a grinder or something we want to make sure it's perfectly straight. And now you can see it's following the top edge line that we want. I'm going to make a little mark to uh, just clean it up a little bit. We got to cut our donor side where the uh, vent was, to line it up nice with the kit, grind it nice and smooth, and give us a nice clean line to allow us to melt together and bond. And we do the process again with welding it back into place and tack it in into place. You can see what else we got to modify or alter just slightly, get it to look clean and blend and have nice lines. Now we're just going to make those filler pieces for the lower sections fill in that hole in the lower part. We also got the hole along the uh, side here that we need to patch in. We had to do this because they cut so much of the bezel away when putting that large monitor in. There was almost nothing left once you took the bondo away. It was just ridiculously thin. Just filling all the holes and all the gaps all the way around and they just melt it all together. This is the one part where it's really just not pretty to watch because it looks so hideous when you're putting it together but that's where your, your glass work and your body work really does uh, create magic in making these bezels. To be perfectly honest, I was completely surprised that I was even able to save this bezel because it was so beat up and so broken. Um, but it actually worked out really, really well. As you can see, it's all in there now. It's all structurally holding the iPad in without any glass work prior. Just repeating the process front and back, and then we're just after that's all done, we're going to grind it down with the grinder and get as much of the high spots and the burrs off of all the plastic and get it as smooth as possible. Doesn't look pretty, but it's strong. And now it's ready for bodywork. We mask everything off, mask the whole inside edge of this kit off, and then we're going to mix up some mar glass. And we're going to lay it down on it and create some shape to this bad boy and make it look really clean. Lay it on really heavy initially, just trying to fill in all the, uh, the major gaps. So I'll repeat that process about, about three times until we get it smooth enough with about a 220 just by using the mar glass. And then I'll use a little bit of the mar glass on the back side as well. Again, we want this bezel as strong as possible. I'm not going to completely cake it on, but I want it strong. 
and we just got to get the rest of the uh, adhesive off and everything they use when they glued on that suede so we're gonna sand all that stuff out because we're gonna paint this bezel and make it look pretty this is definitely the most unfun part of doing these bezels is getting this stuff clean and getting it ready for paint now it's all in all done with the bodywork now it's ready for primer and paint <laughs>